Well, hello. So I want to go over with you how to evaluate the reliability of your sources that you're gathering. So in AP Seminar, you probably used Raven. In AP Research, we're going to use similar but slightly different test um, that I like to call a CRAPP test. So C-R-A-P-P, and each of those letters stands for something. So let's go through that. You're going to be evaluating your sources on these five criteria. So the first one, C, stands for currency. Currency is when you're looking at how current is this source. Uh, when was the information published or posted online? Um, ha has the information ever been updated? Does the information need to be updated? Um, is it as current as it needs to be for what it is? In other words, if you're looking up information on uh, the life and of William Shakespeare, then it does, that information can be very old. Maybe you're looking at a source that was published online, you know, in the 1990s, and, but nothing has changed. His life hasn't changed. They haven't found any new information. So that might be current enough. Whereas maybe you're looking at um, the effects of smoking on children under the age of four. If that's the case, well, you're going to want really current information. Something that was posted in the 1990s is not going to be sufficient for your needs. So as you are scoring the currency of your article, you need to remember that you're looking at when it was posted or published, has it been updated, and is the information as updated as it needs to be for what you're looking at, okay? Then R stands for relevance. So is this, is the source that you're looking at relevant to the topic that you're researching information for? Okay. And not just overall, but looking at is, is the information, is there just a small piece of information in there that's super relevant to what you need, but the rest of it isn't versus it's all relevant, but it's not as specific as it should be. These are all things to take into consideration. Um, have you looked at other sources besides just this one? Does this source acknowledge other sources? Does this source answer the questions that you are looking to find in, in your research? Um, these are all things to consider when you are looking at the relevance of an article. How well does it fit what you need? Um, authority. So, the author or publisher is what you're looking at here. Who is the author or publisher? Um, if you're looking at a, a source online, does it come from an EDU or an, o, or an ORG or a .gov um, versus like a .com? Uh, if, it's, if there is a specific author or publisher, um, what are their credentials? If it's, if it's a publisher like uh, the New York Times, then New York Times is fairly reliable. You know, you have a decent authority there. Not that you can trust everything, but for the most part, they're pretty well vetted. Um, if it's a specific author, do they do they have credentials and what they're talking about? If they're if you're reading an article about smoking um, and the effects that it has, the psychological effects that smoking in the home has on a child. Um, is this article being written by a medical doctor or a doctor with um, a degree in sociology or psychology? These are things that uh, are important when you're looking at the authority piece of this author. If this is just Joe Smo off the streets who decided they were going to rant on a blog online, your authority score would be really low on that one. Whereas if this is an article published through the, you know, a medical journal by a psychologist who has done case studies and spent and dedicated their life to looking at this specific topic. The authority score on this should be really high. All right, accuracy. Um, so, is the the information that is in this article or source that you're looking at is it? Can, it, can you back it up? 
Is there any other sources out there that are saying the same thing? Is there anything out there that lets you know that this is that this is good information, right? Um, does the author back up their statements? Do they just make a statement and then accept, expect you to accept it with no evidence to prove what they're saying is correct? Or do they go on with examples and explanations? Um, do they have sources listed as from what they, sources that they had referred to? Is there a bibliography or a work cited on this? Um, of course, spelling and grammar errors is going to, is going to damage the accuracy score because, you know, you can't trust, you can't trust information from a source that didn't even be, that wasn't even vetted with a spelling check or, or, you know, editing from someone. So accuracy is looking at this, how, how accurate is the information? Can it be backed up? Um, do they have evidence that supports what they're saying? That's what you're looking at for accuracy. All right, purpose. P stands for purpose. And for purpose, what you're looking at is what's the, what's the, what's the point? What, what is their purpose in writing this? Are they trying to teach you something? Are they trying to sell you something? Are they trying to entertain you? Are they trying to change something about our society? What, what, what's the reason that they're doing this? And then are they being biased? Do, does, the, does the author or publisher seem to be giving all sides of the story? Or are they giving one side of the story and acknowledging the other side in a derogatory way? Because then that's not okay. And then the purpose score is going to get lower. Um, is there a political bent or a religious bent or a uh, specific cultural bent or bias to the article? If that's the case, it's going to lower your score on purpose. And so once you have gone through all of those, you are rating those from one to 10. One being that it, that, that piece of your evaluation is extremely unreliable, right? So that you, it cannot be trusted at all, right? That's the, the blog someone was just ranting on and has no accurate information at all. Um, 10 being extremely reliable, right? This is a, this is, each piece of this was very reliable from a good source, all these different things. And each of those categories, you add up your score. And then if it, if your score is 45 to 50, that means it is an excellent source. If that score is 40 to 44, then it's a good source. You can still use it. If that score is 35 to 39, that's an average source. And you may want to be very careful about how you use it, if you're going to use it at all. Um, if the score is 30 to 34, um, it's probably not acceptable. There may be exceptions, but chances are you should probably let that source go. Um, if it's below 30, it's not an acceptable source, and you should not be using it in your research. All right, I hope this helps explain the uh, scoring for the CRAP test for evaluating the reliability of your sources. If you have any questions, of course, don't hesitate to email me. Talk to you soon. Bye.